then guys, I've got the uh, saw cuts in. I've also shaved off the bark as well, just to make it easier to take this piece out. Um, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna move over to a chisel now. Um, and I'm just gonna start gently taking some of these pieces out. Um, now I may need to put a couple more saw cuts in. Um, I'm hoping that I don't, but uh, potentially I will do. Um, and as you can see here, this section here that's had the bark removed, this is what's gonna become um, the sort of the centerpiece where you're gonna put your piece of work um, and basically hold it in. So I'll move over to this and uh, we'll see how it goes. Now I think looking at this guys, um, a couple of extra saw cuts probably would have been a good idea. Um, I'm going to crack on and see if I can do it without and if not I'll, uh, I'll put a couple more in. Right, I think it's going to take a little while guys, um, so what I'll do, I'll, uh, I'll carry on with this, um, I'll skip forward a little bit and we'll come back to once this is uh, almost done and we'll, uh, we'll carry on with the smoothing out. Okay guys, so here we are and pretty much the, uh, the finished product. So I've removed all of the wood from inside as, as we've uh, discussed uh, and this now becomes the, the bench for our piece of work to rest on. Now if I bring you a bit closer in, uh, hopefully you'll be able to see this reasonably well there we go um, and again if I just zoom in on this a little bit you have to excuse my camera work here so obviously this um, you know it's not a smooth finish per se um, I mean I can do a bit of extra work on that and make it a bit better what I'm probably going to do is uh, each time I get a spare moment I'll probably just put a little bit of um, Put the plane on this just to uh, just to give it a little bit more smoothness now as this dries out and the wood starts to get harder and there's less moisture in there it will be easier to plane um, damp wood or green wood is not not particularly conducive to planing um, but to be honest for, for what i need it for it's absolutely fine um, and as i say this is on a couple of wedges there you can see under the bottom just here and here that's just to give it a bit of stability while it's on the bench um, and what I'll do, as and when time allows, I'll grab some legs and I'll do another video of putting some legs on this as well so it could be freestanding separate to my stump. Um, now, what I wanted to show you just quickly is this is the, the actual purpose that I've got this for. So obviously I can use that to carve on. Uh, I can stick a piece of wood on here. I can take my axe and I can carve on it the same way as I would on my stump. Um, but if I want to make something a little bit different, I want to make a bowl, for example. And this is just a bowl blank that I had uh, lying around. Um, and what I can't do on this tree stump below is secure things down. Um, I, you, know, you can't put a vice on there, or potentially I could, but it'd be a real pain. Um, so the idea being is you'll put this 
here or here, however you want to do it. Um, I'm, going to, I'm going to use this just for the demonstration purposes. And what you want to do is just take some off cuts of wood. Um, wedges work really well for this. If you put two wedges um, next to each other so that they're opposing each other. Um, and I'll, I'll show you what I mean by that. Um, so here I've got two wedges. Um, and if you put one, say, here, the other one here, and then push the wedges toward each other, um, you're obviously making a larger piece of material that's locked together. Um, and what that does is it, it locks things together really well, keeps things held down really well. Now I haven't got any wedges to hand at the moment um, for, for this purpose, um, but this was just to give you an idea. So what you'll do is you'll take some, uh, some off cuts of wood, put one say here, put another one say here, um, that might work, let's have a look. Yeah, that might, that might well actually work. Um, let's find my mallet. Yeah, okay. So basically that's what you're looking to do. I mean you can do that in 101 different ways. You, you can make specialist wedges, you can just grab what off cuts you've got. Um, but what that basically does is allows you to manipulate this. You know, you can start using a, um, an adze on here, you can use your axe, you can use chisels, you can use gouges. And what it does is it just keeps this locked in place while you're doing that. Um, now I don't know if you've seen any of my other videos. Um, there's a, a, a four-part series of me making a bowl similar to the blank I've got there. Um, and one of the problems I had on the, uh, on the tree stump is that I had to keep sort of um, driving things into the tree stump to try and secure the, the bowl blank down. Um, and that doesn't really work very well. Um, it can be done, and I have done it in the past, but this, uh, the reason I wanted to make this is this will allow me to sort of lock things in nice and tight um, I don't have one to hand, but if you imagine this is a, a, a gouge or a chisel, you know, I can work on this to my heart's content. I can move this around if needs be. I can move it to wherever I want it to go. Um, same as when I put the legs on it, I can walk around it 360 degrees. Um, and it just allows me to, to, to have a bit more versatility. Uh, and the reason I needed a log this large is there's quite a bit of weight to this log. Um, and it, it just absorbs some of the shock and it absorbs some of the um, the impact from when I'm uh, I'm using carving tools um, and it transfers all of that energy straight through into the piece that I'm working on. Right then guys, well I, I really hope that was helpful. Um, I hope it's maybe given you a few ideas of uh, something maybe you can make for yourself. Um, you know, the, the purpose of this is twofold. It's A, I've wanted to make one of these for a while and it's, it's really useful for the type of carving I do. Um, I also don't want to go out and spend a lot of money on either pre-cut timber to make my own um, you know, carpenters or workbench um, and I don't, certainly don't want to go out and spend hundreds and hundreds of pounds on a, a, a pre-made you know, shop bought uh, work table. Um, so again this is something you can make essentially for free, um, you know I, I was lucky enough to have this wood um, passed on to me by a friend who just happened to see it being cut at the time. Um, you know, if you've got access to woodland and you've got access to um, even, even things like tree surgeons, you know, you can give these guys a call and just say, look, you know, next time you take a particularly large uh, tree or large branch, is there any chance I can, uh, you know, pinch a piece off you? Um, same thing with the tree stump. Um, you know, my neighbour had their tree cut down um, about eight or nine months ago now and very kindly said I could help myself to as much or as little of the wood as I liked. Um, so I've got a lovely uh, carving stump. I've now got a nice carving bench that I can use on here by having a couple of wedges just to give it some stability. Um, and alternatively, when I get the chance, I'll put some legs on as well. Um, and that way I can either take the legs off and use it on here if I want, or I can have it freestanding, um, just kind of sitting in front of me in front of the workshop. Uh, but I hope that was useful, maybe giving you a few ideas. Um, as always, um, comments and questions in the box below. And um, please do hit subscribe if you'd like to see more. Thanks a lot guys, hope to see you next time. Cheers.